In very cold Davos, we have a very special guest today, Chairman of EY, Rajiv Mimani, with me out here. Rajiv, thanks so much for taking the time out. My uh, pleasure, thank you would very Would love much. to understand how you feel about conversations thus far this year at the WEF, relative to whatever you may have had in the past. Yeah, so I would say two things. One is, from a global standpoint, uh, uh, if I was to compare it with last year, I think the mood last year was much more bearish than where it is today. Hmm. I think people were discussing whether we'll have one quarter of recession, slow down, or two quarters. As compared to, and, and you know, it hasn't been the case. I hmm. think things have worked out uh, not perfectly, but not as bad as what people thought it will be. So this, this year, I find uh, people are, uh, I won't say they are bullish, but they are probably feel that, uh, you know, things will start picking up. The interest rate cycle is coming down. Inflation is coming down. Geopolitics is still a concern. AI is still which way it will happen is a concern. Uh, but but overall, I think people feel uh, uh, much better. Europe feels that they'll probably do better than where they did last year. US feels probably they'll be a bit slower than where they were last year. Some pockets of Europe, like Germany and others, may go through slow down. So that's a global perspective. From an India standpoint, I think last year also the Indian story was very strong. But I think it certainly got much more reinforced this year because the growth this year really stands out as compared to global growth. <coughs> People are also seeing whatever was committed in the budget, uh, you know, actually we've probably done better than that. So overall, I would say things are very, very positive from an India standpoint. <coughs> AI, <coughs> sorry. No problem. AI has become much more front and center. I mean, if you walk down the promenade, yeah. you, you see uh, AI much, much more visible than before. So it's really AI, AI, AI everywhere. Geopolitics is less muted. Last time there was a lot of talk about Ukraine and everything else. I think it's muted as compared to what we saw last year. And sustainability, there's a lot of talk till now, but I think given with the uh, around uh, economic issues, around AI, I think it's, it is there, but I won't say it's front and center. And then there's a lot of conversation around elections, elections around the world. Uh, this year, especially the U.S. elections. Yeah. Geopolitics muted, uh, it's a valid, valid point. You think the world is learning to live with the fact that these things are on now and there's nothing much that can be done about it? No, I think it's a concern. I mean, of it's really, it it's a big concern that people have, but I think for whatever reason, I think that's not been discussed and debated to that extent in the forum. But definitely it's a point of conversation. Uh, and people are worried, yeah. and especially given the fact that this is a big election year, I think mm. people are more worried. Mm. So, uh, actually, uh, two interesting points that you bring in then. Uh, mm. One, uh, the India story mm. reinforced. Mm. In some sense, some people call it oasis of growth mm. uh, in an otherwise fragmented world. Yeah. Uh, but also in a year wherein 40, 50 countries go to elections, uh, policy continuity much more likely in India than maybe some of the others. Is that working? Are people talking about that with you? Yeah, I think so. I think people uh, feel that there will be a continuity in policy uh, uh, so I think that 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 factor is, I'm sure it's in the back of minds of people that we still have election and election results are always important. One can never undermine them. But I think people, there's a general sense of confidence that the policy, there will be greater policy continuity going forward. And the government has a much more medium term to long term picture in the way they're looking at things. Got it. Uh, I'd love to understand this from you. Uh, mm. Last year and this year, when I've spoken to corporates, global corporations, they mm. all talk about how they were to increase the India share, make in India for India, make in India for the world. Mm. We've not necessarily seen that in FDI numbers, and you can argue that the services FDI came down as well. Mm. But uh, how do you see this translating into actual numbers being visible? Uh, at I, the think end? It's, I think it's getting better. You think I so? I think it takes time. Mm. I mean, it takes time for companies to pivot. Plus, we don't do a great job of helping people to come in, ramp up quickly, get the land, get things going. I think from our side also it takes time. But I definitely see visible signs of companies now coming. I mean, there are some companies like Apple and others who have a very visible presence. They make a big difference. Uh, in the entire telecom, uh, in mobile handset value chain, the value addition is increasing. In On the consumer side, the value addition is going up very significantly. Defense, we are starting to see early signs of uh, in local manufacturing and also some companies starting to look at exports and everything else. So I think the, uh, I'm very bullish. I think first is manufacturing for India. Uh, I think that's definitely picking up. And I think as that picks up, you know, more and more global companies are also trying to see how they can use India from a supply chain standpoint. And whosoever has come to India, I mean, they've had teething pains. Uh, there are issues around ease of doing business. There are issues around acquisition of land. 
you know, approval processes and everything. But once they settle in and they get a good management team, I think they, they can see the benefits of doing uh, manufacturing in India. So I, I continue to be very bullish on that. Okay. One final question. Uh, the world uh, will probably get used to a, a, a paradigm shift of sorts, higher interest rates related to the last 15 years. But it's also a year wherein, while rates will remain high, but we'll, it'll be a year of interest rates coming off. Hmm. Um, what's your sense about how corporates will deal with this? Because for a lot of them, not Indian necessarily, but global in nature, um, these are unprecedented times of sorts. Yeah, so I think, I, I mean, my pers again, uh, my view is that the interest rates will come down, but may not come down at the rate or the speed at which uh, all of us are anticipating. I think it will take time. In, you know, it's, it's uh, how quickly inflation gets tamed is also a factor of a lot of other geopolitical issues, you know, overall economic growth, what happens in China. Um, so, uh, so it may take more time to settle in, but definitely it will not reach the lower levels what we saw earlier. Of course. So, I, I definitely investment decisions will get impacted, uh, especially for private equity funds or financial investors. Um, I think this will impact uh, their valuation norms, the way they invest, and the amount of effort that they'll have to put in to sweat the assets better. I think that'll get it. Definitely, that'll get impacted. Okay, what stood out for you here? Is it is it the AI chatter at the promenade or something else? No, I would say the AI chatter at the promenade was was probably the the single most uh, biggest thing, uh, and also I think the number of business people who have come, especially from the US, is a pretty high number. So that's the that those are the two things I would say which were quite quite interesting. Mr. Ajay Mimani, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you. On this cold evening, much appreciated. Your thank time. you so much. Thank you very much. much thanks. Thank, thank you. And thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.